Well, now it's time to see our router mortising jig in action. There's a couple things that we need to think about here. We need to figure out how to secure our workpiece. We need to think about setting the depth, the width, and the length of our mortise. So let's start with a workpiece here. And as you can see, I've laid out a sample mortise. Another thing is, I've put a center line on that mortise. Now, if I were to make uh, multiples, I would only need to place the center line on every mortise after our first one. So, to secure this workpiece, my first step is to place it snugly against the back, put it up against the top, and I'll raise this shelf firmly against my workpiece. With that done, I'm going to tighten these two knobs. Now, remember that center line I have on the mortise. I'm going to locate my workpiece so that that center line lines up with a center indicator mark on the top of our mortising jig. With that done, I'm going to tighten this Desteco clamp and our workpiece is right where it needs to be. So what's next? Well, what we need to do now is to set the router into its slot and I'm going to lower it the bit down until it makes contact with my workpiece. What I need to do now is to locate this top front to back until the bit lines up with my mortise. So I'm going to spin the bit to kind of get it in a little better position and I'm going to move the top until I have it just where I need to be. And with that, I'm going to tighten up this knob. So what's left is to think about the width, the length, and the depth of our mortise. So let's talk about the width of the mortise. The easiest thing to do is to cut mortises that fit standard router bits, quarter, three-eighths, and half. But with this jig, you're not limited to those numbers. If you need to make a mortise that's a different width, it will require two different setups, but it's pretty easy to do. But the simplest thing is, stick with those increments. So I have a half-inch bit in my router, and I'm cutting a half-inch mortise. The next thing to do is to govern the travel of our router, which controls the length of the mortise. So I'm going to line the router bit up with the back of my mortise now. Okay, that looks good. And with that, I'm going to set this masonite stop against the base of the router and tighten the knob. And now we'll repeat the same thing to establish the front of my mortise. Now, to establish the depth, I'm relying on my plunge router. And I have this preset so that it will create a mortise that is one and a quarter inches deep. And there we go. We're all set up, ready to go, and it's time to cut a mortise. To begin cutting the mortise, place your router on one end of the mortise and drop the router bit about a quarter of an inch into your workpiece. Slide the router to the other end of the mortise and drop the router bit down another quarter of an inch. Take small bites at about a quarter of an inch at a time, and this will give you a more accurate cut and the router bit won't tend to grab. So there you have it, your plunge router the Woodsmith Mortising Jig. Mortises made fast, simple, accurate, and easy. Woodsmithplans.com. Hundreds of professional, high-quality woodworking plans right at your fingertips. Every single plan is presented as an easy-to-download digital package that includes pages of step-by-step -step instructions, full-color photos, illustrations, and exploded views, retail sources for hardware and supplies, plus a cutting diagram and materials list. Many plans offer handy video overviews and guides. Plus, we're proud to offer our plans in both standard and metric. Everything is here, from gorgeous heirloom furniture projects to handy shop projects and upgrades, clever, cost-effective storage solutions, as well as weekend projects and accessories that are great for gifts, all fully searchable and categorized for easy browsing. Woodsmithplans.com, everything you need for building fine woodworking projects.